just like living organisms, spirits can be classified in species and races and all kinds of things. And if you think it's complicated learning about the animal kingdom, oh boy, oh boy, are you in for a real treat learning about nature, spirits, and elementals and shit? Oh my god. <laughs> Okay, first of all, I don't even know how I'm going to cover all of this in one video. That's not like, I don't know, eight hours long. So I'm going to give you a brief overview, I guess, of my interpretation, what I've learned about some nature, spirits, elementals, and whatnot. So because there are countless of these spirits and some of them are deities some are there some of them are entities some of them there's just a sh okay there's a shit ton and yeah i'm gonna be talking about them as like a general broad like discussion so buckle up hold on to your whitey tidies and uh let's get cracking into this i hear dogs barking <laughs> interesting okay so as you've probably guessed earth elementals or nature spirits are spiritual non-human beings that reside over nature and can come in many shapes forms and varieties and races and classes and so on and so forth <laughs> From what my guides have told me, every living and non-living earthly thing, so things that come from the earth such as rocks, crystals, air, water, fire, earth, ether, things like that. Um, elements from like on the periodic table have a spirit or being associated with it. How is this possible, you may ask? Let me tell you. Well, everything is made up of matter in the physical 3D world, which, when simplified, once, once simplified, okay, anyway, what, hi, I haven't slept in like three days straight, okay, when simplified and you put it to its bare bones, it is energy. Energy exists in all dimensions in one shape or form. Everything that exists in the physical exists in the metaphysical too. It's a matter of balance. Get it? Matter? Okay, anyway. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed, only transformed, which is stated in the law of conservation of energy as the first law of thermodynamics. Science! We love science here! From... The information given to me from my guides, the way I understand it is all about the natural balance of things, but not just purely on an energetic level, but also on making sure the things they are looking after are taken care of, which is still about not tipping the scale one way or another. Simply put, they maintain the existence of whether that means protecting and or healing something or keeping it out of harm's way, they kind of remind me of a nature conservationist that works on ensuring a species of animal doesn't go extinct because it could literally rip a hole in the food chain that could set off a chain reaction that puts the other organisms in danger of extinction, which could cause humanity's downfall and if you think about it it's kind of scary it's like i don't know there are some plants that need to exist in order for like um certain bugs to thrive 
and like the whole thing with the bees and the um, honeybees. When we lose honeybees and bees, it fucks up the pollination of plants. And then when plants can't pollinate, um, let's just say it's just a downwards spiral from there. And honestly, I don't want to think about it because it gives me anxiety. But for those who, you know, care about nature, y'all know about the, the bees. The bees are important. Gotta protect the bees, y'all. We don't want anything to go extinct because that could mean our extinction. But same thing for these nature elementals. So apply what I just said about nature conservationists. Now apply it to the nature spirits and the deities and those that reside over the earthly plane and nature. Intertwined in these nature elementals. And I go back and forth between nature spirits and elementals because, like I said, it's like a very broad term to cover so many things. But, um, yeah, intertwined in these nature elementals, you have plant spirits, animal spirits, fae, fairies, gnomes, more molecular types of beings, mermaids, dragons, and so on and so forth. Like I said, I can't name all of the different types of nature spirits. And you know what? Each region, each country has their own set of um, spirits that reside over there. But think about it. There's some animals that only exist in certain parts of the world, right? You have the Galapagos turtles on the Galapagos Islands. You know, before man brought them to zoos and transported them and whatnot, you know, they existed solely the Galapagos Islands, I think, and just in that region. So, yeah, same thing with spirits. And like I said, for every living being, there is a spiritual being that goes with it. So when you have certain things existing in one part of the world, that means that spirit too kind of exists in that one part of the world, or I should say mainly exists in that one part of the world. So due to a vote, I'm only going to be covering, you know, certain spirits in this Shocktoberfest, like series, situation. But, you know, I will eventually cover more um, on my channel in due time. So stay tuned, if you will. <laughs> okay, so some of these nature elementals or spirits can use multiple types of abilities. And a lot of them have to do with the elements themselves in addition to their healing and purifying abilities, depending on these entities or depending on these spirits, you also can have things like other entities have or other spirits have. So telepathy, um, depending on the scale of like the good and evil scale, can also depend too on their abilities. They can give you nightmares, kind of like anything a negative spirit can do. The negative versions of these things can do the same things. But when it comes to whether these spirits are good or evil, like all things, you can have a mixture of both. But for the most part, I would consider them more on the neutral end. And I'll explain why. Especially the plant and animal ones. So the plants and animal spirits... They pretty much serve one purpose, and it kind of makes them more on the pure end, right? But serving the one purpose and not having any other type of thought or doing anything else, it's kind of like they have no ego. They just have their purpose and they do that purpose. However, in some cases, when dark witchcraft or sorcery are involved and rituals are done, to create negative things or to alter them in any way, this is where things get a little dicey. And you get familiars, which is, you know, a result from 
witchcraft or dark magic. So there are different types of familiars. You have the ones that are created by the witchcraft situation. And then you have like spirit guides and spirit totems and that act as a companion or a teacher that can also be considered a familiar. It depends on like what end of witchcraft you're on because you know the darker side has their own thing whereas the more you know benevolent side of witchcraft has their own thing so yeah I know it gets really confusing but yeah so when magic alters or creates new types of elementals or entities things things can get corrupted and you know there are other ways that these spirits can become corrupted just like anything else that wasn't evil or negative to begin with so another way for an elemental to be corrupted is by extreme negative energy from a negative entity or source or from a traumatic scar left in a location from a catastrophic event that caused the destruction of life or left a negative imprint from negative energy exerted from negative emotions on a grand scale. Wars are a good example of how, you know, a scar can be left on the land. Even though the natural occurring ones, so the natural or nature spirits not created by uh, witchcraft typically have a pure disposition I put them in the neutral category because they have the potential of being corrupted. And like I stated in the beginning, there is a huge variety of spirits in general, like the elemental kind. Some exist in the angelic realms where their only purpose is to heal and protect and cannot be swayed to one side or I should say they cannot be swayed to the dark side. And then you have things such as some fae that exist in the unseelie court that consists of the dark inclined fae. But again, it's all about balance. So where there is good, there is evil. It's a principle of duality as well. So when you move to beings that take less after nature, such as the more human-y looking ones, such as mermaids, goblins, gnomes, etc. Their existence becomes less about nature and more on kind of their own terms, which is another reason why I put them in the neutral category because it leans more to an individual basis based on the type of spirit or entity that they are. So like you have some mermaids and sirens, some are just like chilling in the water, keeping up with the um, ecosystem and doing their mermaid things. And then you have ones that try to drown men in the ocean. Anyway, so, <laughs> and also some of these exist on other realms and dimensions that do not, that don't need to do the whole nature conservation thing and they're just like a thought form. Like there's so many different kinds of entities. I'm just gonna keep saying that because it's true. So trying to describe and categorize a vast amount of entities under very few umbrellas is almost impossible, especially in one medium length video. But bear with me here. Overall, benefits consist of their healing and purification abilities and maintaining the balance within nature. So, you know, they do serve a purpose. A lot of them do. And they're generally good things. However, for every good thing, there is a negative thing. Some negatives include dealing with the negative ones because many times Sage and Palo Santo ain't gonna cut it. And depending on where you live, depending on your culture, depending on so many different things, it will depend on how to get rid of them. 
if you live in Appalachia, uh, they have their own set of like tips that you can use to get rid of certain uh, spirits and elementals and things that may invade the home and cause a disturbance. So trying to get rid of them can be really tricky. Many of these entities have their own method that one must use in order to kick them out of their space. And yeah, and it goes based off of cultures and whatnot. Spirits of bugs. Okay, you know, if you watch my shorts, you know about Morb, the astral spider. That's what I named him. I fucking hate. Okay, let's be real though. I did come... I do have an understanding with some of the spider spirits though because I spoke to one and I was like, hey, listen, I respect you. You're a beautiful creature. We love you. We understand that you serve a great purpose in the environment. However, please stay the fuck in your zone and stay away from the inside of my house because I don't, spiders don't bother me, but when they're in my personal space, like in the shower, that's not okay. So I had enough one day and I'll, I had to talk to a spider spirit and I'm like, please get your amigos out of my space. You can dwell on the outside, but just stay out of the inside. Okay. Capiche. And ever since having that conversation with it, you know, I haven't had any problems. Also, the dryad spirit tree situation has been helping me too. But yeah, so when you have spirits of bugs, um, it can get very annoying. And like the living earth versions, you can get an infestation of them in your home that can in turn attract the living ones. It's like a double whammy, you get the metaphysical and the physical ones. It sucks. The spi mm, the spider ones, the astral spiders will attract more spiders. They will attract more living spiders into your home. And I had astral spiders in my house. And astral spiders are a bitch. And honestly, I see them so often, but that's because I'm so used to them and I've I've had experience with them. It's like I can tap into their energy so easy without trying and then it's like I look boom astral spider so anyway it can be frustrating at times but it's like why can't I get like astral butterflies like an astral butterfly would be fucking lit okay like having a swarm of butterflies in my house whether it's astral or physical would be freaking cool it would be like a, a Disney movie but no it's always the creepy shit. And, you know, you even have negative entities that can attract certain pestilence, whether they're astral, physical, or both. And then you have certain nature or elemental things that work and have a partnership with negative or evil things. So, like, an example, demons... Uh, they can work with spider entities and snake entities, but that's not saying that all snake and spider entities are evil. Let's just get that out of the way. That is not the case. But demons are known to work with those types of entities. But just because you see an entity, a spider entity, or a snake entity in your house, it doesn't mean, you know, a demon is directly involved. It could just be that, you know, you live in an area that has a lot of certain, you know, living versions of the astral version. And yeah, they just trying to live their best life. It could be something so simple as that. But yeah, I think I'm going to cut this video here because I don't know what else to talk about. I mean, guys, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. I will answer. I will answer you guys, okay? And maybe I'll answer you in a short or a video. Ah, uh, ah, uh, who knows? The sky is, I would say the sky is the limit, but that's not true because there are no limits in the universe, allegedly. Anyway, peace out. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of video where I talk about the different types of entities, I highly recommend watching the video I did on thought forms because thought forms are one of the most common entities that you will encounter.